Today on the channel, we're gonna be reviewing these three Festool products. These tools have been the absolute workhorses in my shop over the last six months, and I've pretty much used them on every single build on this channel so far. I'm gonna be going over each one, what I like, what I don't like, to help you make an informed buying decision in case you're thinking about buying any one of these, because they're pretty pricey. So let's dive in and start reviewing. If you guys like this content, please remember to like and subscribe, and let's get to it. This is the Festool TS55 chalk saw. This saw excels at making accurate cuts on large pieces of lumber that you can't fit through your table saw. It has a few other awesome features that I really like that I'll go through in a minute, but I just want to mention its build quality. It's a heavy saw, which is both good and bad. It's bad because sometimes you have to like reach down to make a really long cut on a piece of plywood, and it's a little heavy for that but it's solidly built. Like you feel like this thing is gonna last a long time and I'm sure it's going to. A couple of the features that are really nice is it has its integrated dust collection, which is kind of common in all Festool products and it sucks up something like 90% of all the dust. So if you're trying to have a clean shop, that's really important. The other thing that's really nice is it has a depth stop right here. So if you're plunging into your project, it will be able to go to the exact depth that you want it and it has and a knob here for adjustable miter cuts from negative one to 46 degrees. The main cuts I use this saw for is breaking down plywood. I also use this to cut the ends of tables to make sure they're clean and smooth. And apparently this thing is so accurate that you can use it to actually joint two boards together if they won't fit through your jointer. But it does have a couple things I don't like. Number one thing I don't like about this saw is right there, that's where the power cable goes in. And right here is the dust collection port. They are like five, six inches apart. That is way too far apart. You're like essentially always plugging these two ports in when you're using the saw. It'd be so much nicer if they were both like right here and so that when you had both connected, they would just be like kind of close to each other on the machine. Because sometimes when the power cord sticks out this way and the hose sticks out this way and you're cutting along a piece of wood, the, one of those cords is definitely gonna get caught on something. The other thing I really don't like about the saw is the dust port. So the dust part, generally when you have a hose plugged in, let me grab a hose and I'll show you. So this is the Festool hose that comes with the dust extractor, which I'll be talking about in a moment. So if you put this in, generally what's gonna happen is it's gonna fall into this position where the hose is pointing down. And you're gonna have a flat work surface like this that you're gonna try and that you're gonna wanna cut. And you're generally gonna be doing a lot of things when you're doing this, so you're just gonna wanna put it down on the surface. Okay, I didn't do it there, but I swear to God this happens to go all the time. Let me try one more time. I think it was just about the hose was. So that's generally how it is again. And we try and put it down. You see what happens? You see what happens? When you try and put it down on something, the hose, cause it normally like defaults to a position down, it all always be sitting on something. So like you can, it kind of works, but you're, you're gonna find out when you use this thing. Oh, and sometimes it comes off a lot. When you use this thing, it's always gonna get in the way. So as I was saying, I honestly wish that this dust port was like higher up on the machine so that it was just a little bit easier to maneuver. Now I know they have like a big boom that you can buy, but I don't have that. I normally keep this, this hose underneath my workbench that I pull out when I need to cut. So this is a little bit inconvenient. So there are a lot of benefits with this thing. Namely, it's really, really accurate and it's really fast when you're breaking down plywood or things that can't fit through a table saw. This thing retails for $6.99. And frankly, I've used it a ton and I'm gonna to continue to use it a ton, so I think it's worth every penny. So with that, let's move on to the next thing, which is the Festool sander. This is the Festool ETS EC 155 sander. I have no idea why they have these complicated names, but essentially it means it's six inches across here and the stroke distance, like up and down as this thing orbits, is five millimeters. Don't ask me why they have so many acronyms. This thing retails for $575 and frankly, it's worth it. There's so many things to love about this sander and really not that much to hate. So the first thing that I love is just the fact that it's huge and it takes off a lot of material really quickly. When you're finishing projects, sanding is an absolutely essential step. So you wanna do it as quickly as possible because it's usually pretty boring and you wanna suck up as much dust as possible. So that's what this port is for. It fits the same pose that I use for the track saw. And you just kind of stick it on there and kind of rotate it into place and then it will pretty much suck up all the dust. Not quite all of it, but a, a large chunk of it. And then unlike the track saw, the power port is right next to the dust collection port. So they're both kind of pulling out the same direction, which makes it really nice to use. 
There are two things which I absolutely hate about this sander, but they're pretty minor. The first is that you kind of already saw when I was trying to put on the hose, it's pretty difficult to put it on. Like the track saw just kind of goes in, you turn it. This thing, you really have to wrestle on it. And so unfortunately, if you're using the track saw and you're using the sander, you kind of jump up between the two tools, you're constantly pulling this on and off, which is a lot of hassle. The second thing I don't like about this saw, and this is pretty minor and pretty personal to me, so I'm not sure if you guys will actually run into the same issue, but the button placement, you see the button right there? You kind of have to put your finger over it to actually activate it. And so if you're not careful, you'll see that it kind of makes like right there, like a little pinching area and your finger's right there. So if you're not careful, it'll pinch your finger. And I've had this happen maybe like 10 times before I learned to kind of like reach over it. But yeah, it's kind of annoying that you can easily pinch your finger on this. And you do that all the time and it's like kind of painful. But other than that, I would highly recommend this tool. There are a few other ones on the market. But this one is just works with all the other Fez tool products that I have, so that's why I ended up going with this one. So now with this out of the way, let's review the last tool, which is the dust extractor. This is my mighty Fez tool dust extractor, and it works seamlessly with all the other Fez tool products that I have. It comes with, I think, 15 liters of dust collection storage, which frankly isn't that much, but I only ever use this with my sander or my track saw, so it lasts about three months before I have to change one of the bags. This thing retails for $679. And frankly, that's a lot of money. You can get away with using a shop back for a lot of these things, but this thing just makes everything so much easier when you're using the other Festival tools. I don't really have anything bad to say about this other than it's a really expensive vacuum, but it does pay for itself, I believe, if you use it for a long time. And because Festival is kind of known for their durability and their longevity, I'm sure I'll have this in the shop for like 10 years. Let me go through a few features of it just so you know what we're talking about. So this is a household standard plug-in. What you do is you plug in your Festool tool into this plug-in and then the other side into the contracts or something so that when you actually pull the trigger on your tool, this thing will also start at the same time. So that eliminates this thing running constantly, just making a ton of noise in your shop. This one also does have Bluetooth uh, that you can activate right here. So I know I don't use it, but I know other people do. So they get a little Bluetooth button that they put on the end of this. And so they push the button and this will start on. So I guess that you can use that in case you're not actually using this household plug-in for the dust collection. The other thing are these plus and minus, which, can, which allow you to control how much suction this thing is actually producing. And of course, you can set it in manual mode if you just want to use it as a normal vacuum. And that's the power button, pretty obvious. This is the dust collection hose. This port actually goes into it. And so what happens is you actually have to open this, put it through here, and then do that and that's how you use it, pretty simple. It comes with a HEPA filter, which is honestly really important. And you can pull it out, I think right here? Yeah, right here. That's the HEPA filter. I've been using it for about six months and there's only a few specs in there, which is pretty awesome. And then if you wanna open it and actually take out the bags, cause this is all the dust gets stored in bags in the middle. You just undo those and there's the bags. This bag's been in here for about, I don't know, two months or so. And it's like, I don't know, three quarters of the way full. So I still have a lot of longevity left in this. But I will say that this thing is amazing if you're using all the other tools. It just works in conjunction and really saves me a lot of time cleaning up or just breathing in a lot of bad dust. So in conclusion, I think that Festool products are some of the best tools that you can buy for the money. And I think the three tools that we talked about today are probably the most essential for like an amateur woodworker like me. There's a lot of other festival products that are really expensive with a lot more specialization for the industry, but I just do this on the weekend for fun. And so if you're like me, I would recommend, you know, definitely getting a track saw, definitely getting a sander. And then if you want a clean shop, definitely get the dust extractor. I know that they're expensive, but they'll last you a long time and they just work. That's probably the main thing that I find. I don't have to like mess with these things. I don't have to fiddle with them. They're accurate, they're quick, they're easy. And they save me a ton of worry about breathing in all that dust. So I would recommend them. What do you guys think about these Festool products? Do you think there are other products that I should add to my shop? I'm considering a domino jointer because those things make joinery seem a lot simpler. And I'm considering one of their routers as well. I hope you guys like this video and I'll see you in the next one.